Hello, hello there. This tutorial is on how to make this kimono with a drawstring on the side. The kimono is so beautiful. I used two and a half yards of Ankara, and I the length I used for this is 38. So you can go ahead and just you know make yours longer or shorter depending on how you want it. But this is what I want. So this kimono is so beautiful you can style it anyhow you want you could decide to just leave the string like, like pulled up or maybe you just leave it to just fall to just you know drop and you know come down so it depends on how you want you could just um style this with turtleneck and this is good for casual outings it's good to um for even a church depending on what you're pairing it with it's also even good to go on Friday work days. It's good for that too. Just pair with a very lovely straight cut gown. You know, that's a bit longer than the kimono with your pencil heel and you're good to go. So guys, let's get started with this. So here I've laid my fabric and I folded it into two. I went ahead to just mark out one one inch on around the shoulder area. I did this because I'm going to use it to use that allowance to add my stitching allowance for the shoulder. So I'm marking it out and that line is going to now be my start point line. Please note that what I'm drafting here is the front. Later I'm going to use the front, place it on another fabric and then I'm going to go ahead and cut for the back. So after I was done doing this, I decided the length I wanted for this. The length I'm using for this is 38 inches and I marked it. So here you can see the way I folded it. I just, there's really no measurement for this. I just folded from one selvage to the other. Okay, like you see me doing in the video. So next thing I did was to mark my neck width. And the neck width I, width I used for this was 3 inches. And the depth is 3 inches. Although at the end of the day, I will not still use this 3 inches depth. But it's fine. I just had to mark it. So after I was done doing that, I had to pull my fabric over. So you guys can see what I'm about to do at this end. So at this very end where you have your sleeve, I am going to be inserting 3 inch. I'll go down by 3 inches. Now this 3 inches is trying to create um, a shoulder slope. So you're going to use your ruler and you're going to be connecting that 3 inches to the point of your neckline so after you're done doing this now this is what it looks like okay you went down by three inches for the shoulder sloping remember that this um this length actually it's almost like after my or close to my three quarter so once i was done doing that on that end when you went down by three inches you're going to be marking your armhole my armhole is eight inches and i went ahead to add extra two inches to it because i really wanted this to be um you know very open because i intend to style it with um a turtle neck a top later when i'm going to wear it out so after i was done doing that at that point where i marked that 10 inches i went ahead to go in by 1.5 which you see me marking so i took the 1.5 straight down up to the end of the length so after i was done doing this the next thing i did was just to you know create a kind of curve around that area so it's not the edge is not sharp so after i'm done doing this this is what this kimono really looks like for the front I brought in my scissors and I cut out the neck. But once I was done cutting out the neck, I remember that I had not added the, the half inch for my shoulder stitching, like to join my front shoulder to the back shoulder. So, and I went ahead to just add that at this point and I just cut it out. So guys, if you've not subscribed to my channel at this point, I think this is a good time for you to do that. So please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you're going to be notified every time that I upload a new video. In this channel, we just teach sewing tutorials and tips that will help you in your sew journey and make it a lot easier. Also, please make sure that you're giving me a thumbs up. It encourages me a whole lot to do more. So here, after I was done cutting all of this, what I did was I now placed the front on another one as an, another one for the back. 
and on top there you see i left about two inches because i'm going to be rising on the shoulder for the back for by 1.5 inches now the reason you're rising for the shoulder on the back is because you want to you know get that balance on the shoulder area so that your kimono doesn't keep you know dragging backwards sometimes after making stuffs like this you realize that they keep dragging backwards and you're always struggling to pull them over in front so but with this 1.5 you're adding that is higher it makes it a lot easier for you and it doesn't keep you know dragging backwards it stays firm and sit firm on your shoulder so please make sure that you do this after i was done adding that 1.5 all the way i rolled it and i cut it out at this point so once i was done doing this the next thing i'm going to do is that 1.5 that had cut out that that I added for the back i'm going to fold it over making sure it connects to the line of the half inch that i'm going to be joining with for the front so once i do this now the next thing i'm going to do is to get my pins and i will pin it down please you can go ahead to just use your iron to iron this point down but there was no light so i just had to make do with my pins iron is fine pin is fine either way it's okay so i placed it down that way because you need to now the reason you're doing this is because it needs to stay in place like this so that you cut the neckline for the back if not when you finish you're not going to have a very smooth curved neckline at the back if you don't do it this way so once you're done folding this next you're going to be using your scissors to indicate that point of your neckline so after i was done doing this what i'm going to do is to just um go ahead and at the very tip of my neckline for the back that's the center point of my neckline for the back i'll be going down by 1.5 inches which is going to serve as my neckline like my neck depth so half inch for stitching and then one inch as the neck depth so i've marked it and i'm going to unpin this at this point and then connect my neckline like curve it as you can see i'm going ahead to now curve it you could use your cover maybe just use your freehand method i wanted to use a cover let's have to just drop it and just use my freehand method to just like you know draft this so i've done this and i'm going to go ahead to cut it right now and once i was done cutting it Once I was done cutting it, next thing I'm going to do is just to cut out, you know, the sides. And that was it. And I'll cut the down part to make the, the length equal. So after doing this, I took away the back. And this is just the front at this point. So what we're going to be doing, that kimono is not has a straight part so we're going to be creating its neckline the neckline for it so this is what i'm doing using my ruler and i connected all the way straight down and i'm using my scissors to just cut it through till the end so after i was done doing this so next this is my strap this is just what was remaining for my fabric and thank goodness it was enough for my strap so i'm marking two inches for my strap because i'm going to be turning it over because i'm going to you know sew it together and i will turn it inside out so i'm marking two inches all the way after i did i placed i cut it out and i placed it on the other side so that i'm going to have two straps now these two straps when i'm going to be adding it to this kimono i'm going to be cutting it into i'm going to be having four pieces because i'm going to be cutting cutting each strap into another two so here i've gone ahead to you know cut it all out all right and you see what it's looking like then i've placed the back making sure that the right side of this fabric is facing upwards and then i'm bringing the front and i'm laying it the same way making so sure that the right side of the fabric also is facing you know right side like right side facing right side so i'll put it together and i'll go on my sewing machine and i'm going to join the shoulder i'm going to just close the sides also for the side i'm using one inch on both to close both sides now i'm using one inch because i'm going to be creating a casing for my for my um you know for my drawstring so please make sure you're using one inch or maybe 1.5 but don't use anything less so that the casing is going to be big enough to accommodate your your straps so here i've marked it and i curved it all the way so i'm going to go over to the sewing machine and i will just sew it and bring it back so that you guys can see so here i've gone over to my sewing machine and i've actually sewn this i've um 
I've you know joined the two shoulders together I hemmed the neckline all the way I hemmed the sleeve area and I also closed the two sides and even hemmed you know the down parts so you can see what I've done so far so this is it so this is the one inch that I closed with and this is my hemming I just hemmed with the fabric but you can also decide to use a bias strip to do this but I don't see the need since we have a lot of fabric already laying on this so I just hemmed um hemmed this all the way around the neckline all the way around to the down part I hemmed the down part I hemmed um the the sleeves so here is my straps I have four of the straps like this I told you I was going to cut this into two I think the length of this strap is about 30 inches or I'll be 35 inches for each of the straps so I'm going ahead to use my safety pin and I'm going to you know hold it like that so I'm going to go turn this inside out so once i was done doing this i will just turn this inside out all the way and i'll go ahead and just iron it and i will do the same thing for all four of them turning them inside out just like you see me doing in this video i'm actually going to fast fold this now so that this makes it you know faster for us so guys please i'm going to ask again if you've not subscribed to this channel what are you waiting for please hit the subscribe button give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying my videos and also you can share our links to people that might be interested in what we're doing here you know you could uh, share our links to them and invite your friends to come and watch our videos thank you so much and also make sure that you subscribe also so here is where the one inch on the side all right you see the way that i folded this i folded this separately i didn't join them all the way before folding i folded each down separately because i'm going to be adding um a drawstring i'm going to be creating a casing for my drawstring so here now is what it looks like and i'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to create this casing so first i'm going to just open it up into two please go ahead and iron yours at this point there was no light and i didn't want to on i didn't want to go down to go and on the generator so here I will just open it up and i'll create a casing like we always do when we're doing a band so you're going to fold in the first one and then you fold in for the second you're going to just fold in and then you pin all the way down so what i did was the length that i used from the down part going inwards was 15 inches yes you could actually if you want yours to extend even higher there are some that i've seen that extended from the down all the way close to the even almost to the armhole but mine stopped somewhere around the waist from the down so this is totally dependent on you so from the down i marked 15 inches and that's where i stopped for my for my casing so you can see me pinning this down and you know i'll fold i'll pin down i'll fold i'll pin down i did the same thing for the other side and i went ahead to do the same thing for the other side of this um kimono so here i just measured the length i wanted which was 15 inches so once i was done doing this is what it looks like still on pin so i'll take it to the sewing machine now and i'm going to sew closely towards the end of the edge of that fold i will just sew it all the way and stop at that 15 and tack it so here i have gone ahead to sew it and this is what it looks like guys we've created the casing for this this is what it looks like you see my 15 inches mark this is what the front part of it looks like and the other side is the back part of it so at this point now we are going to just bring our straps and we're going to try inserting it through that you know hole that we have on each side of this kimono so just look at what i'm doing i've used my pin to just secure that strap and i'm passing it all the way through until i get to that 15 inches when i get to that 15 inches i'll make sure that this strap exceeds the 15 inches a little bit because i'm actually going to sew that place down so i need like an extra to be able to sew it down so i'm doing this and i'm you know gently pulling it 
why I used why I said you should use one inch for you know to close the sides for your kimono is actually so that you will have this allowance now for your strap. So you see the way we pulled it out a little bit on that side, and we are going to just use our pins right now. I'm going to use my pin and I will just secure that point. So once I've secured that point, I am going to go ahead and I will do the same thing for all four points of this um casing so after i am just done doing that hula this is almost ready i will take it to the sewing machine and i will tack that point so guys this tutorial is so simple it's actually beginner friendly i think even if you don't really know how to sew that much you could actually as far as you know how to you know you know pedal your machine and you can actually tell you know the difference on how we uh, do our calculation like divided by four and all that i think you can actually sew this it's so beginner friendly it's so so easy and it's so, also easy to make. So I'm going ahead to just do all four sides. Like I said, you can use one and a half to close on each side when you are closing your kimono. So here, this is what it looks like. After we've pinned it down, I will take it to the sewing machine and I will stitch it at that point, at that 15 inches point. So I've gone ahead to do that. And this is what it looks like, guys. This is coming together. This is coming together. So I'm just going to go ahead now and you know drag it just so that you guys can see what um the casing that we've created looks like on this kimono jacket so here we go can you see can you see what it's looking like on the side so this is what it looks like I will just go ahead and I will just tie it. So at this point, you just, you're the one to determine how you want this to be. You could decide to, you know, keep dragging the drawstring until it gets really way up. Or you could just decide to just drag it a little bit. Or you can even decide to just leave it all the way straight down and rock your jacket like that. Either way, it is your choice. So I've done this now. Just look at what it's looking like. This has come together and it's looking so beautiful. I'll just wear it so you guys will see what this looks like. So here is the final look of this jacket it's so pretty and it's so beautiful my god i can't wait to rock this i'm actually going to rock with the white turtleneck and maybe this white trouser i don't know but then i'm not going to rock with the sleeveless that's why i made the sleeves you know big you can make your smaller if you want so here is what it looks like here i'm untying it and just showing you guys you could actually leave it like this or maybe you could just go ahead and draw it guys thank you so much for watching my video you know i'm so happy to have you here i'm going to see you guys in my next one bye